Tune ATK may be one of the smartest ATOs out there, and you'll be surprised how easy it is to set up. Hi guys, I'm Randy, and on today's BRS TV how-to video, we're installing the Neptune Systems automatic top-off kit to save us from having to top our tanks off by hand. The ATK can be used in standalone mode or connected to a Neptune Apex. That means you don't have to own a Neptune Apex in order to use this ATO, but if you decide to get one down the road, your ATK is simple to integrate and is enhanced even further with email and text alerts, as well as graphing. Let's first get started with what's included in the ATK, which will come with a fluid monitoring module, a practical multi-purpose utility pump or PMUP, a magnetic water level mechanism that houses two optical sensors and a float valve, a 24 volt power supply, some orange ATO tubing, and an adapter fitting for the pump. Whether you're using the ATK in standalone mode or connected to an Apex, there's some cool features that are unique to both configurations. First, the Neptune ATK uses internal programming called IQ Fill, which helps to protect your ATO from running dry or your tank from overfilling. Basically, when in standalone mode, IQ Fill begins to learn how often and how long your ATO pump is on and uses that information to set safety points where it will purposely time out after five minutes of pumping or when it's been running for three times the normal pumping time. Not only will the same feature work when the ATK is connected to the Apex, but it will also send you email and text alerts when the pump outlet is off, which will allow you to refill your ATO reservoir or check the sensors before turning it back on. Coupled with two optical sensors and a float valve, this now means you have four layers of redundancy built into an ATO that's completely independent of any aquarium controller. Another neat feature of the ATK is that the sensors and float valve are interchangeable. So for those of you with smaller nano tanks or all-in-one tanks, you can simply remove the float valve and have two optical sensors for a high and low water level reading. We'll start today's install with the ATK in standalone mode, which means you will not be using a Neptune Apex to set up and use the ATO. To get started, we'll first attach the adapter fitting to the output end of the PMUP and insert the orange tubing into the other end. We remove the compression fitting from the flow valve inlet and slide the orange tubing through. While pushing the tubing into the fitting, tighten the compression nut until it's snug. Now mount the sensors inside your sump with the desired water level covering the lower optical sensor and then drop the PM up into the ATO reservoir. With the FMM mounted, insert the low level optical sensor in port one and the high level sensor in port two. The PM up gets plugged into the accessory port and all that's left to do is add power. Some of the features you'll find while using the ATK in standalone mode are the noise and light indicators that keep you updated with how your ATO is performing or if there's any ongoing issues. A blue LED light means that the ATK is functioning normally. The green LED means that it's actively filling and the red LED means that there's an error. If you end up seeing a red light, the FMM will also emit beeps to let you know that something may be wrong. For those of you with the classic or newer 2016 Apex, you'll install the ATK with the same steps for installation that we did in standalone mode. However, this time you'll be connecting it to your Apex via the Aquabus cable. As we all know, firmware updates for both the Apex and Neptune module are a must prior to programming them, so be sure to update both before going any further. After you have them both updated, you can set up your ATK. I have to admit, when I first attempted to install the ATK on both the Classic and 2016 Apex, I thought I would have to spend quality time revisiting programming code to get them to function correctly. But what I found was completely opposite. Neptune has included a programming feature called Tasks that takes all the guesswork out of advanced programming and does it for you by walking you through a series of easy questions. To find Tasks, Click the drop down menu in your Apex Fusion home screen and scroll down until you see it under the configuration group. Within the tasks menu, you'll see a selection of simple to use configurations, including one for configuring your ATK. Follow the prompts describing your specific setup and on the final page, it will show you what you can expect from the programming it created for you. Down the road, if you wanted to add a leak detection probe or another optical sensor, you can use the same tasks feature to program them in. If you're looking to trick out your Neptune ATK, there are some additional add-ons that really step this thing up to the next level. As I mentioned before, you don't need a Neptune Apex to use the ATK, but that doesn't limit you to just the two sensor ports. With the additional ports, we can add things like leak detection probes and additional optical sensors that not only warn you of a leak, but also tell you when your ATO reservoir is low. If you decide to get a Neptune Apex down the road, all of these same features are enhanced even further with available text and email alerts. 
Along with that, if you don't know what to do with those open sensor ports on the FMM, you can add some flow sensors from the Neptune FMK, which you can use independently of the ATO to monitor your flow from the return pump or dial in that flow on your UV sterilizer. The highlight for me with these add-ons is now I can graph and log each one to see historical trends of on or off times, as well as variations in flow rates over a period of time. All right, guys, let's wrap up this installation with some quick maintenance tips, which are key to keeping this awesome reef gear lasting you many years. As I mentioned with each Neptune Apex install, firmware updates on both the Apex and your modules are a must to keeping them up to date and functioning correctly. Along with that, you'll want to keep things like sensors and float valves clean and free of any buildup or algae that may cover or block them. I like to take these parts and give them a quick scrub with a brush at least once a month, as well as clear off any tough buildup with a little soak in vinegar water or citric acid solution. Finally, the pump also needs to be cleaned periodically, especially if you're using caulkwasser in your ATO reservoir. Caulkwasser can build up pretty quickly, so you may want to clean the pump more often to keep it from binding up and breaking down. Well guys, that wraps up this installation. If you have any more questions, please don't keep them to yourself because that's what this team of reefers lives for. Give us a quick call or email, and if you need your answer in the next 60 seconds, hit us up with a chat. See you in the next episode of BRS TV.